just want to thank you all very much for coming out for tonight's program, Raising Backyard Chickens. This is the third in our homesteading series. And I do want to also take a moment before I introduce our speaker for tonight to thank the friends of the library. They do all of the fundraising for us. And without their support, we wouldn't be able to offer programs like this. So thank you very much to the friends of the library. And now I'd like to introduce to you tonight's speaker. We're very happy to be joined by Dr. Ejike Eza. He is going to be teaching us everything we need to know about raising your own backyard chickens. Dr. Eza, thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. Well, good evening, everyone. Everybody can hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Well, um, as Gary said, my name is Ejike Eza. I speak with a weird accent, so if there's something you don't understand, please raise your hand. I'm happy to repeat myself. You know, um, I take no offense. Um, so yes, we're going to talk about chickens, raising chickens, my favorite topic. I enjoy chickens, raising them I mean, not necessarily eating them, um, but it's something I've done uh, my entire life. Um, so I prepared uh, this presentation to just uh, talk you through a few things in case you are interested. I hope that most of you will be interested in raising your own chickens going forward. So we're going to talk about a little bit about my life growing up around chickens and with chickens. Um, we'll talk about why raise chickens, why raise your own chickens, um, when it doesn't make sense to do so, uh, how you can get started, the different breeds of chickens that there are, um, you know, how to keep your chickens alive and healthy, which is really important, and what to expect um, when you're raising your own chickens. We will have time for questions and answers. Okay. All right. Um, so, this picture here, uh, I found this on the internet. This is not me. I'm a lot. I was a lot more handsome than this kid growing up. Um, but I found this picture, and this could have been me. Um, I grew up in Africa, in a country called Nigeria, uh, southeastern Nigeria, and I, I was raised in a rural village. We grew whatever we eat. So it was, you don't, we didn't have stop and shop where you can run out and get your grocery and stuff like that. Whatever you raised, you ate. Um, there are obviously a few things that you have to buy from the market, but in the most part, you know, you did gardening and you raised your own livestock and, and, and that's, that's how you, you fed in the most part. Um, so every family in my small village had chickens, okay? Um, some had other animals, um, some had goats and chickens. And my, you know, we had goats and chickens, but um, every, almost every family had chickens. And the number ranged from half a dozen to several dozens. It depends on you know, um, the number of people in the family and how much work they're willing to do. Every child was involved in feeding chickens. Okay, so growing up, I, it was part of my chore every morning to uh, go open the, you know, the door and let the chickens out and you know, grab whatever leftover food uh, and throw out in the yard for them to feed on. Um, we did not really build cages and coops like you know, we have here for our chickens. Our chickens ran around everywhere um, and they always came home and everybody knew everybody's chickens. Nobody would tamper with anybody's chickens and chickens found their way home um, at the end of the day. Um, we did not necessarily go out and buy food for chickens. You know, so here there are stores that specialize in selling food, and so we're going to cover some of them. But our chickens just went around and ate bugs and whatever they could find in the most part. But then if there were leftover food uh, in the house, you know, rice is a staple, uh, so you throw them in the yard and they would uh, snack on those. Um, our chickens were raised mainly for meat, okay? Um, income generating, so you would sell you know, chickens to buy other things that you didn't have. Um, and for celebrating accomplishments. I'm sure this one will come as a surprise. If you're, if you're from this culture, you'll be wondering, what do you mean celebrating accomplishments? I don't mean killing them for that purpose. Um, oh, but I'll give you an example. My, my uh, uncle bought a car, a brand new car, and he brought it over uh, to show to my parents. Uh, one of the first things my uh, dad did was to go and find the biggest chicken that we had. 
and, and offer it to him. It was a way to say congratulations for something that uh, you did, you know, a big accomplishment. So we use chickens for stuff like that. And obviously when they get home, they're gonna you know, kill the chicken and eat it with their family and everything, but it was their way of showing appreciation or you know, for uh, encouraging somebody for something they have done. Um, we did not keep chickens as pets, so, um, so that was just not anything that we did. We had dogs as pets, we had cats as pets, but not chickens. Okay, chickens were meat, they were food. All right, so that was my life growing up. Um, totally different now that I'm raising chicken here. But that gives you an idea of why I got so involved with chickens and why I love them so much. But this small video, I'm just gonna play this real quick, is actually me um, with my chickens here. Um, so I, I like hanging out with them. You know, they, they come out in the open yard and I throw um, food at them or snacks, whatever it is I get my hands on. And uh, interestingly, my chickens have uh, come to recognize my voice. So when I come home and I say something, they all rush. They, they know that I'm home uh, and they come get some stuff. Okay. So this is one of our evenings together, uh, just having fun in the yard. Okay. Um, not a lot to see there, so we will move on in the interest of time. Um, stop this. All right. So, why raise chickens? You can go to stop and shop and buy chickens. You can buy your eggs from there. But so, why go through the trouble of raising chickens? I would tell you. First of all, it's a good source of quality meat and eggs. Um, I give out my eggs to my friends. And what I hear from everybody is how different the taste. The eggs, my chickens run around in the yard every day, they're not cooped up in the, in, the, in the coop, and everybody just talks about the quality of the eggs. The eggs that I used to buy before I started raising chickens here were not anything close to the eggs that I ate back home. But the, chick, the eggs I get now from my chickens are very close to it. They taste very good. Uh, same thing with the meat. Um, we don't, I don't get to eat uh, too much of my own chickens. I just like raising them. Um, but the meat also tastes a lot better. Uh, it's a great hobby. For me, it's a hobby. I don't sell eggs. I don't sell chickens. I give away every egg that, um, that I get. I just enjoy doing that. Uh, so for me, it's, it's a hobby. Uh, and it gives me a lot of joy. You know, when I hang out with my chickens in the yard, it gives me a lot of joy to do that. So that's something that people can do, you know, just to have fun. Um, it's an interesting pet. You know, some people use it here as, as, uh, as pets. And, you know, that's um, something interesting. So there are so many different ways you might want to do that. It could keep you busy. There's, you know, there's a variety of, of things, um, you know, that may want you to, uh, may cause you to raise uh, your own chickens. But in the most part, most people here raise chickens to, you know, to get eggs, for the eggs. Okay? All right. When not to raise chickens? Okay, first of all, if your goal is to save on grocery money, it's probably not going to happen. Okay, by the time you factor in all the cost of the chicken and the feed and all, all kinds of things like that, it's not, it's, it doesn't save you money. It really doesn't. Unless, of course, you decide to do it in a commercial quantity, that's a totally different thing. You're now moving away from what we're talking about here um, into something else. If, uh, it is, if your goal is to have your chicken as a companion for a child, a small child, it's probably not a good idea. Chickens peck at things and you don't want a chicken around a very small child. They could peck their eye out, you don't want that. So it's not a good idea to, to raise a chicken simply to have them as a companion for a little child. If your goal is to annoy your neighbor, that's not a good reason to raise chickens. All right, um, I heard an interesting story about um, a guy who started raising chickens because his neighbor had a dog and the dog used to bark every night and so he figured he would raise chickens and he had roosters. And the roosters crowed every night. So now they had the war going on there. Not a good noble thing to do. So if you're trying to annoy your neighbor, don't do that by raising chickens. 
If you don't have the space for chickens, it's not a good idea to raise chickens. I always say, I heard about people who live in apartments trying to raise chickens, not a good idea. Chickens need a lot of space to run around, to forage, and, and, and they make a lot of noise. So if you don't have the space, please don't. don't. Don't try to do that. Chickens take time. They, you know, they do tend to themselves quite a bit, but they require a lot of time as well. You have to get up in the morning, go open the, you know, the door for them to go out. And when they come out in the evening, you have to go close the door and protect them from the predators. You have to feed them, you have to bring water, and there's all kinds of things that you have to do. Pick the eggs when they start laying eggs. So it does require some time. So um, take that into consideration. But one uh, more important thing is if your town doesn't allow it, don't do it. That's against, that would be against the law. You don't want to be raising chickens when your town says don't do that. So we're going to talk about checking um, with your town first before you get into this. Okay. All right. Getting started. If you decide that raising chickens is for you, do your research. Take your time. Don't rush it. Do some research and find out whether this makes sense for you and also what the laws, the local laws are, okay? There are great websites out there. Um, this, this link here, MA Laws About Backyard Chickens, is a very good resource. If you go in there, you would actually be able to um, uh, search by your, for your town. You know, so you can find your town there, go read up on the town, find what the town wants and doesn't want. If you can't find information about your town there, go to the town hall, ask questions. You know, make sure you understand the laws about chickens. There are towns that will allow you to raise your animals, but they will not allow you to kill them. Okay, so you may raise the chicken, but you cannot kill the chicken in your town for food. There are some towns like that. You'd have to take it to somewhere to go um, um, kill it and clean it and bring it home if that's what you want to do. So find out about what your town wants and doesn't want before you go into it. Think about the cost of raising the chickens. Uh, you're going to buy the chicks themselves unless you want to hatch your own, which most people don't do. Um, so you'd have to go to the store and buy the little chicks when they are like one um, week old, that's typically when most people buy them. Um, they don't cost too much, about you know, three to four dollars or something like that. But there's some cost associated with it. The feeds, you're going to have to buy feeds. Feeds are not cheap. Okay. Um, depending on how many chickens you have as they grow, you may go through a 50 ba a pound bag of feed in a week. That's about $20. Um, so you're going to think, th think about that. Water. Chickens need water all the time. You have to make sure that the, the, the water is always uh, full, always has some water in it, and it's clean. Clean water. You're going to buy the coop or build a coop. That's labor associated with all of that. So do your research around all of those things and make sure that you understand what you're getting into before you actually jump in. Think about your supplies. Where are you going to get them from? Depending on where you live, there may not be a store that's near you where you can get your supplies. There are a lot of online places now that where you can buy supplies, but if you're not comfortable with online shopping, you may have to think about it, uh, think about your location before you go into it. Security for your chickens. Chickens are very vulnerable. They're vulnerable to predators, especially raccoons in this area. One of the most um, dangerous things for chickens is the raccoons. They're all over the place. The problem with raccoons is they will kill the chickens, they won't eat them. So a raccoon gets in, it could kill all of the chickens but they won't eat a single one of them. So you wake up in the morning and see your chickens all dead. That's a nightmare for any person who loves chickens. So you gotta think about security. Are you able to build something that will really keep the chickens safe? Okay, think about the weather. What is the weather in your area? Is it too warm, is it too cold? 
that may factor in into the type of chicken that you're actually going to buy or breed of chicken. Some of them do better in the cold, some do better in the, in the warmer temperatures. So that's something to um, take into consideration of, uh, uh, as well. This one may sound a little weird, but it's true. What are you going to do with the eggs when you get them? You know, sometimes people don't think about that. But the chickens will start producing eggs and they go, oh, I can't eat this many eggs. Oh, and I can't sell them either. What am I going to do with them? As I said before, in my case, I enjoy giving them out. You know, so the, the, the challenge I have is actually getting the, the boxes to put the eggs in. Because I give out all of my eggs and I always tell people, the, the boxes are more important to me than the eggs. Just give me the boxes back. Um, so think about what you're going to do with them. That will determine how many you get. If you just want you know, eggs for your family, maybe you just get one or two. Uh, if you want to, you know, give, to, give out or do other things with it, then you may want to get more. So do your research. That's the first thing. Um, and then, to uh, um, actually jump into it, think about the location. Prepare the location where your chicken is going to be. Think about the distance to your house, okay? Chickens are smelly. They are dirty. You don't want them too close to your house. And in summer times, they're going to attract flies. They're going to attract bugs. They may even attract rodents. Rats love to eat chicken um, poop. So, you know, you don't want to put the chicken too close to your house. So think about the location. Find a, an ideal location for you um, before you actually go get the chickens. Think about the distance to your neighbors. The last thing you want is for your neighbors to be disturbed every day because of your chickens. So if you're living in a place where it's too close, don't put your coop right next to your neighbor's place. Find a place that's a little removed um, so you don't have any problems. Water supply. You're going to be you know, giving them water every single day. So where are you going to get the water from? Are you going to schlep it from the house? You know, so think about that as you, you know, prepare your location. Now, once you have decided where you're going to actually keep the coop, the next thing is to get the coop. Don't make the mistake of ever buying the chicken before you have a coop to put it in. I have a very interesting story about that, but I will not share it today. Because it's, you know, this, I think the, the person that's involved knows. Um, but if you buy the chicken and for, for any reason you're not ready, once they get in there, they start growing, you're going to start feeding them, you better have a place to put them. So in the order of things is get the location squared away, get the coop built or buy the coop. Um, there are times when it's easier to just buy it. There are other times when if you're handy or you want something a little larger, you could go out and, and, and build it yourself. But make sure you have that squared away before you actually get the chickens. Buy the feeders and the waterers. I put some examples. There are some good ones that I use. Um, when you first get the chicken, you're going to need a heat lamp. Okay? Um, when they are young, before they're fully feathered, they need to be under about a 90 degree temperature. So it's not regular room temperature. They need some warmth. So you want to make sure you get some heat lamps to you know, put over them and you see them huddle. Whenever you see the chickens huddle together in, in one place under the lamp, they're keeping warm. If you see them start scattering away from the heat, the heat is too much for them. That's always the rule of thumb. Okay. They get a heat lamp for them. Once they're fully feathered, you won't need the heat lamp anymore. They'll be fine. Okay, but you need to make sure you have something to keep them warm at the beginning. And then, of course, the food. Have the food ready before the chickens even arrive. So that once they, you get in there, you put them in, they have something to eat. Okay. And then you go get your chickens. Where do you buy the chickens? There are so many different places. There are places online that will actually mail the chickens to you now. Yes, they will, you know, you, you go pay online, they will deliver them at the post office, and you go and pick them up in a box, okay? Um, so that's, that's an option, a lot of people do that. Um, there are local companies that also uh, have chickens. Tractor Supply Company is a great place to buy chickens, 
okay? And they have them in, in several locations in the, in the South Shore. So you, you, you go there and get your chickens, um, and then you're, you're ready to go, okay? I'm going to pause for a second, see if anybody has any questions before we continue. No yes. All over the place. That's okay. Yeah. I don't know what else to do. That's okay. How much space would you say you need? Say, you know, what's a good rule of thumb? That's a, that's a great question. So, you're thinking about two things. You're going to think about the coop itself, and you're going to think about the run. Okay? For the coop, they don't really need a whole lot of space. You know, the chickens, they, they tend to, they're herd animals, they go to huddle. So that's, that's, that's good, you don't need too much space. So um, if you have, uh, and if you're buying it, it will actually tell you how many chickens that each one of them will, will take. The runs are the ones that are more important. If you don't have a yard, a fenced in yard, where they can run around, you wanna make sure you have a larger run. So uh, I would say if you have only, if you have about five, Chickens, and I'm going to get my math here wrong. Um, I would say get a run that's no less than uh, six feet, maybe by six feet, something like that. Just give them enough room. Even that might be a little tight when they're actually full grown. When they're little, that's perfectly okay. But when they're growing, they, they need the space. So the key thing is think about, you know, you need to give them space to run around. Um, you may have, get away with a smaller run if you have a yard where you can open the, the runs and they can go out in the yard, then that's probably fine. Okay? So if you do that at night and you have to put them back in the coop, do mm -hmm. they run around and you have to catch them? Put them in over like going on their own. That's a great question. So one of the things I found interesting with my chickens, is that I never had to do anything to put them in. They found their way in every single time. And I was joking in saying, so I, had, I have two separate coops and the run is in between them, between them, that's how my setup is. So they would, in the night, go into one to sleep and in the day they would go into the other one. And I was joking with my family, I said they have a bedroom and a living room. They never in the day go in the place where they sleep and at night they never go in the other place. And when they started laying eggs, they continued that trend. They would lay eggs in the other place that's very clean and then at night they go to the other place to, to sleep. So you, you wouldn't have to worry about getting the chickens in. They would find them where they were in. But you need to open the door for them in the, during the day to, to go out and play in the yard. Good question. Okay. Anyone else? Yep. Um, with the roosters, do you need a rooster or do you just, like, what happens there? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a tricky one. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for fertilized eggs, if you want to have fertilized eggs or you're going to, you want to start hatching your own, maybe. Even with that, you don't need a rooster. Um, I always say that unless you live removed from everybody else, yeah. don't get a rooster. And even when you buy the chickens, chances are that there might be one rooster in them that you don't know because they're so little when they come. Relocate the rooster as, as soon as you can because they will annoy your neighbors. I had one. I had one that came in, my, in, the, in the first batch that I had. It didn't know when to crew and when not to. So it started at 3 a.m. in the morning and it will crow all night long and all day long. It will crow when it's hungry, when it's afraid, when whatever the circumstances is, it will crow. Um, so we had to relocate him. So you, you have to you know, be careful about roosters unless everybody else in your neighborhood has roosters then that's probably okay. Uh, or you live, in, you know, live far away from other people that you won't disturb them. But nobody wants to be woken up at 4 a.m. in the morning because your rooster is crawling. She said um, they can sneak in somehow because they're small so you just gotta watch out for that. Yeah. yeah. Somebody to come every single day. Absolutely. Wow. When you go on vacation, that's, I, I should have put that in there. When you go on vacation, somebody has to tend to your chickens. Um, yeah. They go for like a day. They have to be clean <coughs> every night and lay out every day. Yeah. Well, yes, because if you don't, then you're exposing them to the predators. Um, that's really why you're doing it. I mean, they know how to go in, but if it's open, 
then the raccoons and everything else can come in and go after them. So yes, you do need to close the door for them in the night and make sure that they're protected. Yeah. Yeah. Is that bad? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yep. sorry, but how many eggs does one chicken give you? About? Good question. Let, we'll get that in just a second. I have yep. a question. You yep. might be on it, but um, what is the lifespan, the, the average lifespan of a chicken? I have no idea because it varies so much. Um, when I was growing up, I'm pretty sure we had chickens that lived for up to five years. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Nigeria. Oh. You missed the intro. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. I met the others that, you know, that passed away within three years, so it just depends. Okay. Yeah. But that's a good question, something I should actually look at. All right, let's um, keep moving and we'll, we'll come back to more questions in a little bit. Um, Picking the right breed. Good job. Good job. Good Go ahead. job. Picking the right breed of uh, chickens. Uh, a few things to consider. One, your climate. There are certain chickens that do better in the cold. The ones that have a lot of feather, like all these ones that we have here, will do well here in New England. There are some chickens that don't have much feathers, like in their neck and all of that they will not do very well in this place because it's cold. But they would do better, say, in the south, you know. Uh, so think about that. And I'm going to show, show you a, a chart in a minute that shows you all of the different things that you can look at in different, um, and the different breeds. Rooster versus hen. As we were saying, most people want hens because they want eggs, right? If you're going to get a rooster, be careful. Just know what you're getting into, okay? Egg production, that was your question about eggs. Most chickens will give an egg a day. Whoa. Most of them will give an egg, an egg a day. There are some that will give one egg every other day. The one thing that I would say though is when they are stressed for any reason, they may go several days without laying eggs. So if something happens, if, if, if an animal came and harassed them and, or anything of that sort, they may not lay eggs for a little while if they're stressed. Um, I have a riding lawnmower, and the first time um, I cranked that thing up, my chickens freaked out. They didn't like the noise at all. They were so scared. They all ran to one place and they huddled. They did not lay eggs for a little while after that. So, you know, just keep that in mind. But in the most part, if everything is, you know, hunky-dory, you'll get at least one egg a day uh, per chicken. Okay? Meat production. There are some chickens that are better for meat than others. So some chickens are smaller and obviously not a lot of meat there. Some are bigger, weightier, and so they will do better with, uh, with meat. So when you're buying your chickens, think, am I buying primarily for meat or primarily for egg. That helps to determine what breed you, you're going to get. Foraging. Chickens love to forage. Even if you left a pan of feed right here, they are going to find a place where they're going to forage. So if you put them out in, the yard, in your yard, just bear in mind that they're going to tear the yard up because they're looking for bugs. And the moment they find, you know, it, there's a particular time in the um, let uh, let fall when they find all those little bugs uh, under the grass, they will tear the grass apart. They'll eat them all up looking for those bugs. So that's um, something to also keep in mind. So, um, and then predator awareness. There are some chickens that are more aware of predators than others. So when you go into buy, when you go buy buy your chicken, think about it and ask questions. So when you if you go to like tractor supply, just see the chicken sitting there. Ask questions about what is this breed and what does he do and so on and so forth. Get some more information. Okay. This chart is out on the internet. Um, this is a good chart that will tell you, you know, all the different kinds of breeds that there are. There's so many of them. Um, you know how they handle heat and cold. Um, rooster versus hen, egg production, and so on. If you just Google, um, you know, ch choosing chicken breed, you're going to come up with this. It just shows you all kinds of things. You can download it, you can look at it, and you know, it gives you an idea of uh, what you may want to uh, get. 
Okay. All right. So moving on, keeping your chickens alive. I, I do want to pay attention to this because a lot of people start out with chickens and within a few months they lose them. Okay? Chickens are very vulnerable. So one way is to start early spring. Buy your chickens in early spring. Okay? Hence the term spring chicken, right? The reason is if you get them early spring, by the time you get to the end of summer, they are strong, they are big, they, are, they can withstand things better. And then they will do well in the winter. They are fully feathered, so then they will, they will survive the cold. If you get them too late in the summer, they're going to have a hard time in the winter. You're going to have to put the heat on for them every single day for them to survive. So start early and give them time to grow and to thrive before the winter comes. Temperature control. I mentioned before that when they're very little, not fully feathered, they need heat. Um, 90 degrees temperature minimum will be 80 degrees until about five weeks or so until they're fully feathered. Um, you want to make sure that they're warm enough. Um, they need clean, dry coops and runs. Chickens don't like wetness. They don't like dirt. They make a lot of dirt, dirt but they don't like it. Uh, so you don't want your chickens to be cold, you don't want them to be wet. So please make sure that you keep the coop very clean. Um, I say to people, rule of thumb, clean out the coop once a week. Okay, just, you know, if you, and if you're building a coop, make sure you do it in such a way that it's easy for you to take it out and go dump it out. Okay, it makes for really good manure if you're doing gardening. Um, and you have chickens, you're going to grow incredible crops because, you know, it's very, it's good for the soil. So, you know, grab it, go dump it in your, in your yard and till the yard and once the rain comes, you're going to get really good crop. But keep the, the, the uh, coops clean. Secure the coop and the run. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. Even your dog, your pet, is a threat to your chicken. Um, I've seen, you know, people who just, the, the dog just plays fetch with the chicken. You know, you don't want, they want to protect the, the chicken from them. Coyotes, cats, they all hate chickens. Um, you know, snakes. Snakes will go after the eggs. So if you, you know, if you have chickens and they're laying eggs, be careful when you're going to go get your eggs. Um, if you're, especially if you're going in, in the night when it's dark. Um, take a lamp or something. The picture here is the, is the worst nightmare for any ch person who loves chickens. Waking up in the morning and seeing all your chickens dead, that's the walk of a raccoon. Okay? Um, the right food and water for them. I buy organic food for my chickens. Okay? You don't have to, but that's what I prefer. Um, it's healthier for them. Um, and I, I think it, it factors into the quality of the eggs as well. So, but you don't have to, but just think about what kind of food to get for your, for your chickens. Um, don't give them too much treat. The food is designed to give them the nutrition that they need. If you give them too much treat, you may be you know, tipping one side or another. Okay? But it's good to give them treats once, once in a while. Um, know where they are at any point in time. Okay? Uh, have an idea if they wander off, know generally where they are. Recognize signs of distress. If something is going on with them, you need to be aware of that. Okay. So what to expect uh, when you are raising chickens? First, chickens are noisy. Not just roosters, even regular hens are pretty noisy, especially have quite a few. They will wake you up in the morning, especially when they're hungry. They make a lot of noise when they're laying eggs or when they're getting ready to lay eggs. They make noise when they're hungry. So chickens are noisy, just bear that in mind. Okay? They are smelly. The chickens will poop into their water, they'll poop into their food, they'll poop all over the place. That's why it's not good to have it in an apartment or use it as a pet because there's nowhere to train, toilet train a chicken. They will poop everywhere. All right, so they can be very smelly. They can be very messy. They are always hungry. Chickens we eat every single time. 
They may not eat necessarily immediately what, what you put in the, the feed you put out there, but they'll be foraging and getting something to eat. So they eat all the time. They can be expensive to maintain. As I said before, if you're doing it just to save on groceries, it's probably not a good idea. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the eggs do not come immediately every day. One of the questions people ask me all the time is, when can I expect eggs? One thing I say to people is, think about it as, as in terms of human age, in terms of numbers, right? An 18-year-old is an adult, right? An 18-week-old chicken is an adult as well. That's when you will expect X, about 18 weeks. Some may start a week or two earlier, some may start a week or two later, but 18 weeks is generally when you expect to see your, your first X. And when you're buying the feed for them, the, there's a starter feed that you're gonna start with to grow them, the grower feeds, um, and that's what they need to be on until about that 18 months, 18 weeks. Okay, once, once you see your first egg, you're going to have to switch to the layer feed because then they need other things in that to be able to have hard eggs, otherwise the eggs will be too soft. Okay, so 18 weeks is about what you expect. So for 18 weeks, you're just doing the work, you're paying, and you're just, you know, investing in it, nothing's going to show except a lot of poop. Um, but, I, you know, right around 18 weeks, you start seeing some eggs and it's very, very exciting. The first one you see is going to be very little, sometimes it's soft, um, and then it gets bigger and bigger and it grows as the chickens are mature. Yes? I don't know if you took questions in between, but yeah. um, one thing I'm so curious about is like, so when they have, when they lay eggs, they're babies, right? Like, or maybe, babies. like, what is the, like, what is the difference between a hen laying an egg and it being a baby versus like, what is the process and the difference between them laying a baby and them laying an egg? Like, well, with the yolk and things like, I've yep. always been so curious about that. Yes, so the, the, the chicks will come from the eggs, obviously, okay? Now, regular eggs that they lay, if you don't have a rooster, will not be fertilized eggs, okay? So they're not, you're not going to get chicks from them, okay? The regular eggs that your, chick, your hens will lay, based just on the feed, they will not, they're not fertilized eggs. Okay. If you have a rooster, chances are you will have some fertilized eggs. Okay. Now, if they do go and sit on those eggs, if you allow the chickens okay. to sit on those eggs for an extended period of time, they could actually hatch them. Oh, wow. Okay? But if you just, if they just, most times they don't care. They lay the eggs and they move on. You know, you come around and you pick your eggs and, and you move on. Um, but if you're looking to hatch your own, then yes. And there are machines that, they, you know, that are sold that can help you hatch your eggs. If you wanted to do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so those are some of the things to expect um, when you are... Uh, raising chickens. Um, I know I went through quite a bit of uh, information here, but uh, what questions do you have? You should never have one chicken. It's, it's not a good idea. Yeah, yes. So, um, so talking about when, say, the raccoon gets them, these dead chickens, how do you dispose of dead chickens? Like that? Of the dead chickens? Yeah. I mean, you know, no, you, you could bury them, yeah, you could bury them. If you didn't have that kind of space, I mean, would you call like animal control? I, I, I think so. Yeah. I, I, I've never had to deal with that, but I would say that, I, you know, I know that people do bury them. Right. Um, others will call animal control and, and to pick them up, yeah. And then I'll um, talk yeah. about the poop. When, um, uh, say like yesterday when we had the inclement weather, yeah. they were in their coop. Um, would they get wet in there? And how would you keep them, like, I don't know, it just seems like, um, how, yeah. how do you keep them from getting wet? Wet, yeah. Kind of it's, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, you need to, you have to have a coop that you can actually close, yeah. right? Not the runs, the runs are fine, you know, mm -hmm. but the coop has to be in such a way that the water shouldn't, the rainwater shouldn't get into it, okay. snow shouldn't get into it. But in addition to that, I advise people to buy um, a top. Okay, I do have a, a very long top that I put over my, uh, over mine as well. So when the rain comes, you know, it, it protects the, um, 
the, the coop. Oh. Because in, um, it doesn't matter how good the coop is, if the rain continues to fall on it, some of it will get in there, but the top will prevent that. Yeah. So you, you, because you, ha you have to keep your chicken dry, especially at night, it's, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the chickens, will pro if they're old enough, if they're already old enough and they're laying eggs, they'll probably survive the winter without the heat, especially if you have a few. Uh, but it's still a good idea to put um, the heat lamp uh, for them. I will say be very careful with, with heat lamps. Um, they've been known to malfunction just like you know, space heaters will malfunction. So, um, and if they malfunction for any reason, um, they could ignite um, and catch fire, which would be very dangerous, not just for your chicken, but you know, for other people around as well. So be careful with heat lamps. Um, there are regulators that you can buy, you know, so that you, you turn them off at say, certain times of the night, um, and then turn them on when somebody's actually available to, to watch it. Yeah, but uh, if they're grown chickens and you have enough uh, wood shavings around them, they'll just burrow in it. Most times they're okay in the winter. Yeah. Yes? What do you have on the ground in your run? That's a great question. Um, I would encourage something hard. Um, I have uh, bricks. Um, so, the, like, you know, the, 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 part, the, the thing we use for pathways yeah PF, thank you so that's what I laid down and I put the um, the uh, coop on, on them when I first started I didn't have that but then what I found was that uh, animals were digging through the ground to try to get to the chicken so I had to put something hard on that you could also use wood uh, if you have pressure treated wood um, they may not last as long but you want something hard you don't you don't want any animal burrowing through to go get at your chickens because some of them will they, they can't be that desperate yeah good question yes Two more questions. Um, the compost you said that you know their poop is good do you have to No, not really. Right in the garden? You can put it right in the garden. Yeah. It's not too hot. Yep. And if you do have raised beds, would, will they go over and eat your, your stuff if you let them roam around? The chickens, you yeah. mean? Yes. Oh. Chickens will peck at anything they see. Oh. They will peck at anything they see. Even if it's something they don't like. Yeah. Um, my chickens love watermelons. I mean, they'll eat everything including the the back of watermelons but they hate apples <laughs> so you know i have apple trees i'll throw them in the garden they'll look at them and they'll simply just ignore them but if they saw watermelon they'll go crazy you know so you know but it doesn't hurt them one way or the other they'll eat whatever Chick the thing about chickens is they're very resilient when it comes to what they eat most times what they eat is not going to hurt you know hurt them mm -hmm. they eat all kinds of junk and it doesn't bother them. Do they eat meat? Like say if you had a steak dinner and you throw it up the... I would not encourage that. I've never tried it. I think if you threw it in the wood, yeah. but I, it's not a good idea. Um, you know, the, the one thing I'll say that I found bizarre was chickens eating eggs. Oh, wow. So if you, were, if you were picking an egg, for instance, and you dropped one, you'd be amazed. They would rush it and they'll eat everything, including the shell. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't seen them eat meat. I've never tried it, you know, but I, I don't think it's a good idea. What do you give them for treats? The eggs? No, the chickens. What kind of treats do you give them? Do I give them? Oh, yeah. So, um, I give my ch uh, chickens boiled rice. So if we had leftover boiled rice, I'll throw them in the yard. The chickens love them. There are some um, dry worms that they, they sell at uh, places like um, Tractor Supply. They are wonderful treats for them, and you throw them, and they, they enjoy them. There's also a particular type of grass um, that they enjoy. You can also buy them from um, uh, chicken so, um, Tractor Supply. Um, but but it's, good, it's a good idea to give them uh, treats once in a while. I think my chickens got to recognize my voice because I'm always... Uh, giving them treats. So whenever I say, uh, hello ladies, they all run, come running. It doesn't matter where. Yeah. 
I, I, well, I don't have any roosters, so. Yeah. How do you um, break a broody hen? What do you do for that? Um, when they sit on the eggs like they're going to hatch them, but there's no rooster, so they won't ever hatch. Yeah. It, it does happen. I haven't had to deal with that, uh, but it does happen. Um, I know that people uh, physically pick them up and, and, and take the eggs. You know, one thing that you're going to find when you first start is when you go to get the eggs, the first couple of times you feel like you're stealing something, right? Like they're sitting there waiting and you go there. I try not to take the eggs when they're sitting there. Um, but if they really get to, become, to brood on them, then yes, I would, you know, pick them up to get the eggs. Because there's no point. You're not trying to hatch your eggs. So what's the point in allowing them to sit on it? And if they sit long enough, they'll probably crack something and then they're going to eat it. And once they get used to that, they probably start pecking on them to see if they could, uh, you know, crack them. Do they lay their eggs during the night? They lay eggs at all times. Oh. Yes, they can lay in the night, they can lay during the day. Um, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint, especially if you have a few, it's hard to find out exactly when. Yeah, but I do know that early in the morning, uh, you're going to hear this, you're going to begin to recognize the sound of them wanting to lay eggs. Uh, so typically in the morning, I would say about 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock in the morning is, is when mine mostly lay their eggs. What's your favorite breed? Like I saw you with a picture you have white, white ones and yeah. brownish color. What are they? I have, uh, is it, uh, it's called a long horn, I think. I have this. Uh, Oppington and the Plymouth Rock. Yeah. Yeah. What is that column of rooster versus hen? What is that? Yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's telling you which which ones on these. Um, good, good question. Uh, rooster versus hen. That's a good question. I'm not sure that, about that. Oh, no. I think it's, it's basically saying that each one of these can be either a rooster or a hen. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. When do the chickens after they, I mean, after they stop producing eggs? When do they stop? What do you do with them after they stop laying eggs? Oh, yeah. It depends on the individual. A lot of people will, you know, just eat them uh, when they stop laying eggs. There are others that give them away um, and allow them to live, their, live, out, live out their natural lives. It really depends on you. It depends on what you had in mind in the first place when you started uh, um, um, taking care of chickens. I have a neighbor who is always giving out old layers. Once they're done, you know, he'll call and people will go grab them and you know, have them for meat. Yeah. How old before you can eat them, or how old should they not be eaten? Like, is there an age you shouldn't eat it? Is it too old to eat, or vice versa? No, I don't think it's ever too old to eat. Uh, the, it might be, the meat might be a little tougher as they get older. As far as when you can, I think once they're old enough, like 18, um, 18 weeks, they're probably old enough. Um, but I would say that at least a year or two, if, if it's purely for meat, uh, before you can say, yeah, this is good enough. Uh, but it, I mean, it's not like store meat where, you know, they, they hatch them over a few weeks. If you're raising your own and they're running around, they won't grow too fat. You know, they're going to be lean meat. So you want to give them some time if, if uh, meat is what you had in mind. That's correct, yes. So if you pick the eggs, yeah, if you pick the eggs and you, you want them to stay longer, then don't wash them. You know, if, you want, if you're going to use them soon, then yes, you can wash them. But yeah, the, the, ones, the unwashed ones definitely last longer. Uh, you, you don't have to. I mean, you, you, we do. You could, you could refrigerate them, yeah. But they will last longer even unrefrigerated. Yeah. But definitely washing them makes a difference. Yeah. I don't know if this is too personal, but like, I know I missed the beginning as well. But for you personally, feel free to answer or not. 
do you um, eat the chickens that you raise? My, my own chickens? Yeah. No. Okay. I, I, I mean, like growing up, did you eat the chickens that you, like around, that were raised by people? Other people? Yeah. I eat chickens. I'm not, yeah, I'm not okay. a vegetarian. Not, not, not chicken, but like raised chickens, like that you know literally like where they have been. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I like um, chickens that were not raised in cages. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't just not eat my own. I, my own are purely for eggs, and and I enjoy giving out the eggs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was curious because I went, I went on a, like I was in South Africa for like three months, and I was like, wow, this is crazy because this is literally it was rural too. Like I was like, wow, this is literally the first time I've seen where this chicken, like where my chicken lived yeah. and saw it like, you know, and I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is what I, not what I want, but like, it's yeah. cool to know where your food comes from. Absolutely. No, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I, you know, I, when I did intro, I talked about growing up with chickens. I had a lot of, you know, awesome. chickens and, oh, <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, so we all grew up with chickens and, you know, at that time, yes, you, we ate them, but the ones I have here now are for special purposes. I just wanted to make eggs so I can give them out. Um, yeah, something I enjoy. And you would never eat it even after it stopped playing? I don't think I will. I would see those as my babies at that point. Yeah, I don't think I will. And I have kids also who oh. are going to make sure that we don't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> so that... I'm going to go, no, you're not eating them. Yeah. I have friends who keep saying, oh, so when are we going to eat them? You know, <laughs> Nigerians like pepper soup, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, when are we going to have pepper soup? Like, you're not getting at my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> you can have all the eggs you want. Yeah. All right. I think we are going to wrap up. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Appreciate your time. Yeah.